Hi everyone and welcome back to my channel. Today we would be starting with the first lecture on this new series of an introduction to CFD with MATLAB. So today we would be learning about the various finite differencing schemes such as the forward difference, the backward difference and the central difference. But before we can talk about any of these schemes, we will talk about what is known as the Taylor series expansion because that's where from all of these various differencing methods are actually evolved. So the whole idea or the whole question of using a Taylor series expansion is that suppose if we have a function f and we know the value of the function at any point x0, can we use this information to predict the value of the function at another point say x1 or something else? So that's the whole reasoning behind using the Taylor series. So if you don't know much about the Taylor series, you can have a look here or you can skip this part to the actual finite differencing section. So let's jump right in. So let us say if we have a function that is called as f and we have the x-axis here and on the x-axis we have one particular noise point x0. And the value of this function at x0 is f of x0. Quite obvious, right? Now, let's take another point, which is any distance away from this x0. And in the context of CFD, we typically write that distancing is h. So let us say this point is then x0 plus h. And we want to know what the value of this function is. That is f of x0 plus h. So quite conveniently you can see what we are going to do next. If we have to be very lazy, what we can say that the function has the same value at both the points. Right? Problem solved. So we can say that f of x0 plus h is f of x0. And this idea is not so stupid. In the mathematical context, this is referred to as a zeroth order approximation, or we're simply saying the function remains constant in that range. So this is what is called as the zeroth order approximation. Now we have to be a bit creative, right? Every function cannot be the same. So what we do to evolve this process is we assume that the function behaves linearly or in other words, the function behave as first order. So if let's say the slope of the function at x0 is f dash x0, then all we need to know is this particular segment here. Let us say this is L and we know that from very basic geometry that f dash x0 which is the slope of this line would be equals to L divided by H. Now our initial objective was to determine the f of x0 plus H and if you look at the geometry here the f of x0 plus H which is this entire vertical height this is nothing but f of x0, the first bit, f of x0 plus L. And we have established here that L is nothing but f dash x0 times h. So that's our approximation for the function's value. And this is called as the first order approximation. Beautiful. Now we need to understand that again sorry but no functions are so similar. So what if the functions are more curvy and by that I mean we can introduce a curvature in the problem and that means that we have to take the second order derivative into account. And I wouldn't go deep into the mathematics but that means that f of x0 would become f of x0 plus f prime x0 h plus f double prime or the second derivative 
times h square and it is actually x square divided by 2 factorial and that is the second order approximation and if we do just like this and we keep doing it we arrive at a general expression of f of x naught plus h which is the Taylor series expansion of the function f at any point x0 which becomes something like this one here and our general term is h to the power n divided by n factorial multiplied by the nth derivative of function f evaluated at x0. This x0 is very important. Now this is the equation from where we would obtain all the difference in c. So to obtain the first order derivative what we do is we just tweak this equation we don't do anything special. So what if we take this f prime or f dash x naught on the other side and we can very simply write that divided by h because we want to evaluate it separately minus h divided by 2 one of the h would get cancelled to h square and so on I'm not writing all the terms here so now the important thing to note in this particular equation is that the x naught plus h and x naught if you look at the location of these two uh, points physically in space we have the point x naught over here and x sorry x naught plus h over here and x naught over here and the x naught plus h is further away or lying forward in space as compared to the original point x zero and if we write the first order derivative this way we call it as the forward difference approximation of the first order derivative and this is very important because this is only the first order derivative so this is the approximation and for these particular terms we can neglect these terms and what we do for this neglection is we write that the neglected terms are of the order of h and this h comes from the first term in the neglected area so to repeat again, so we're calling this as the first order approximation because the point x0 plus h is lying ahead of the point x0 or lying forward in space and there are some terms that we're neglecting and the magnitude or the order of magnitude of those neglected terms is dictated by this first term here which is of the order of h. And the last important thing here is that this is the first derivative approximated by forward difference method. So that was how we arrive at the forward difference method. For backward difference method, we can do very simple trick. Now, since the point was x0 that we knew about now we can move the another point on the other side of x0 and we can move it here so it would be x0 minus h so if you do the simple trick that we did so far you can write that f of x0 minus h is f of x0 minus h times f prime or f dash x0 plus h square divided by 2 factorial f double prime x naught plus it would actually be minus here and the general term would be hn divided by n factorial fn x naught and it of course would be determined by minus 1 to the power n whether it would be plus or minus so to understand this we can simply so a shortcut to arrive at this is if you take the forward difference or the Taylor series and just 
replace h with a minus h and that would give you a Taylor series expansion for a point that's on the other side or that's behind or backward in space. So if we write the derivative f prime x naught using this approximation we can write that it is f of x naught minus f of x naught minus h divided by h and again we have some terms for which the first term is of the order of h and for these neglected terms we say that these are of the order of h and this is what we are calling as the backward difference method for the first derivative of f. So notice that for both the, for the forward difference method and the backward difference method. So this is the forward difference method and this is the backward difference method. For both of these methods, the neglected terms are of the order of h. I will talk detail a bit later. So now what we do, we take, let's use this color. So we take the equation one here and we take the equation two here. The general equation, the general Taylor series expansion that we wrote for one term on the forward side and one term on the backward side. And if you just add these equations, so let's go here, 1 plus 2. Let's see what happens. So if we add 1 plus 2, the left hand side becomes f of x naught plus h plus f of x naught minus h equals to f of x naught appears in both the equations. So we get twice the f of x naught. And we see that this particular term here it actually gets cancelled out. So we lose the first order derivative here and we see that the second order derivative term it actually appears twice. So it would be simply h square f double prime x naught and similarly the third term would cancel out and we would be having the fourth order term which is 4 factorial f 4 x naught but times 2. Now this is where I gave you a hint of how you can obtain the second order derivative using a scheme but we are interested to know how to get the first order derivatives for now. So rather than adding the equations what I do is I subtract these equations from each other. So 1 minus 2 gives you f of x naught plus h minus f of x naught minus h and what happens is the x naught let's use a lighter color so the x naught from this equation here and the x naught from this equation here they get cancelled out and similarly the term of the second order derivatives because they are the same they got cancelled out as well so we are left with the first order derivative being twice So we have twice f of x naught times h plus then we have the third order derivative which becomes twice f x naught and so on. So now if you tweak this equation you see that f prime x naught is actually f of x naught plus h minus f of x naught minus h divided by 2h this time and we have the another terms which would be h cube h square actually by 3 factorial and so on. So now if we neglect this particular term here or these terms here we see that the order of the neglected term is actually 
h square so this is very important here so now we have the first order approximation or sorry the first derivative approximation of the uh, the function x of f of x zero and is dictated by two points that is one on the forward side and one on the backward side so we call this as a central difference method and we see that the order of neglected terms here or the order of error that is associated with central differencing method is h square so if we have to write the order of the error we see that for forward difference method is h the backward difference method is again h and the central difference method is actually h square so what this means from a cfd perspective is that suppose if you have a domain of say unit length and as we will learn that for cfd computation we make a mesh of it so we divide this particular domain into different parts so let us say we divide this domain into 10 parts so the distance between each of the points become 1 divided by 10 so it becomes so let us say the h is 0.1 so now if we approximate the derivative using a forward difference method we say that the order of error would be 0.1 same goes for the backward difference method and this is where the central difference methods are more accurate than the backward or the forward difference because their order of the error is h square so they would give you a smaller error as compared to the forward difference scheme or the backward difference scheme so this would be all for today and in the next class we would be learning about how you can use these particular schemes for higher order derivatives because as we would be learning towards the later of this class that the Navier-Stokes equation for instance it has the first order derivative and the second order derivative that appears in the viscous force term so we want to know how we can write the viscous forces for instance uh, according to these schemes so stay tuned for this but in my opinion a good idea at this moment would be to practice the derivation of these methods so far so that you would be more comfortable with that because we would be doing a lot of uh, mathematical manipulation using this method so i hope that you learned something today and i'll see you next time